Hey everybody, this is going to be a quick video um, that I'm going to tack into the uh, Reliant Shaper project series. Um, and in this video, I'm just going to talk about converting the uh, voltage on the motor from 120 to 220 or vice versa because um, I had a, uh, a YouTuber who uh, was watching my channel and was uh, reaching out to me and asking me if I could help out with that. So. What I did was uh, I opened up the machine here, and we're just going to take a quick look and see if we can't figure out how they've got this thing uh, wired. Now, my unit came wired stock for 120 volt, and I, um, I'm sorry, 220 volt, and I already converted it to 120. So the way it's wired right now is for 120. This is a uh, Reliant model DD34, um, made from 1979 to 1999. And it's a one and a half horsepower, and then voltage. You'll see it says 110 slash 220, 60 hertz single phase. Of course, it's made in Republic of China, so uh, it can run on either 110 or 220, depending on which way you wire it. Now they wired it from the factory for 220, and they want to make sure you know that by putting a sticker up above the drum switch that says 220V. Also. We take the side cover off here and we look at the motor and on I'm sorry not on this side well while I'm over here let me show you this is the data plate on the motor okay which um, doesn't tell you anything about how to wire it it just tells you that it can be run on 120 or 220 depending on how it's wired and it tells you that it's an induction motor and the only thing telling you who makes this motor is in the upper left hand corner that little red circle has some tiny letters underneath it. That's probably the logo for the Chinese manufacturer who made this motor. So if you have a different motor inside of your shaper, if a person prior to you who owned it swapped the original motor out for something else, um, or did something like that, then this might not apply the uh, the wiring that uh, I'm going to show you. Hopefully you've got the original motor and it's just like this and then you can just copy the wiring that I've got here and you should be good to go. On this side we take the access panel off and you can see the actual junction box on the motor itself. Now that junction box covers right there that actually also has a sticker on it. And this side of the cover is actually visible from the other side when you first open it up, but I already took the cover off. All right, so disregard the uh, corrosion and everything you see inside your inside my box here. This is uh, this was left in a damp location. It was actually outside under a tarp. That's where it was stored for quite a while, so that's why that's got that corrosion in there. There's also some sawdust in there. But um, so what you've got is you've got a terminal strip, and you've got a terminal strip with one, two, three, four, five screws, two rows of five screws. And the way it works is the top screw, the upper screw is common to the, to the lower screw on each one of those. Okay, so in other words, if you look at like the far left top, you'll see there's a blue wire. That blue wire, all the wires on the top are wires coming out of the motor all the wires on the bottom are wires coming in from the power cable, the input power cable. Alright, so because the strips are common top to bottom, that means that for instance the far left top wire, the blue wire, is making an electrical connection with the bottom far left black wire coming in from the power cord. Okay? And I mean the power cord coming from the drum switch, which I'll get to in a moment. Alright, so the connections are as follows. Blue wire from the motor to black wire from power. Black wire from the motor to white wire from power. Also, on that same upper strip uh, screw, we have the red wire from the motor. So, red and black are tied together, and they're being sent to the white wire. 
third screw over, the middle screw, the yellow and gray, that appears to be a gray wire, yellow and gray wire from the motor are tied together on that screw and are being connected to the red wire from the cable. The next to the last screw is the white wire from the motor and that's being tied to the yellow wire from the cable. And then the last screw or terminal is actually uh, in this application is unused. And I actually think I remember I had a problem with that uh, terminal strip so I ended up having to I think use a different one than I had originally used but basically if you tie it together that way that should be the proper wiring. I, I know that I had seen a wiring diagram somewhere I have the owner's manual for this. It might have actually been in the manual because I know that I didn't just pull this out of my butt <laughs> so to speak. I know I actually had the proper instruction on how to wire this. That's how I was able to figure out how to rewire it. And I do remember that it was this terminal strip here was where I did did the wiring changes to make that happen. But I'm going to show you the wiring on the drum switch up above just uh, just for good measure. Okay, so now I'm on the left side of the uh, shaper and I've got the left hand cover off and I'm looking back at the drum switch and those wires you see right there are all the wires coming out of the cable that goes to the motor, that goes to the junction box. So those are all the wires that go to the bottom uh, of the terminal strip that I just showed you. So looking at the drum switch, the drum switch has six screws on this side. The top left screw has the black wire, top middle screw unused, top right screw white wire bottom left screw red wire bottom middle screw unused bottom right screw yellow wire and oh I didn't mention it before but the ground wire is the ground wire it goes to ground over here it, it actually goes to a screw that goes through the body of the uh, the shaper and uh, cabinet and that also on the other end it uh, terminates inside the metal box and basically grounds the case of the motor so now let's look at the input side of the drum switch, which is where the power cord hooks up to. Okay, so, so this is a little harder to see on this side. But, but what we've got is we've got six screws. Top left screw, the black wire. Top middle, unused. Top right, the neutral. And that's it, because you only have two wires coming in for 120 volt. Okay, so hopefully that... Uh, that explains it. If you've got different wiring colors in that in your unit than I do in mine, then unfortunately I uh, don't know how much help I'm going to be or that this video is going to be. Uh, I do know this, that um, a motor that's designed to be able to be run on and wired on 120 or 220, basically it has two run windings and the way it works is it has to be wired with the two windings in series for 220 volt and then it has to be wired for change to the two windings in parallel to run on 120 and you know if you don't know much about electrical then series and parallel aren't going to make much sense to you so at that point unfortunately you're going to probably need to um, either find somebody who has a unit exactly like yours um, or hopefully this this helped you all right so this is just a quick and dirty video so i'm going to cut this here um, in the next segment uh, for this series i will um, be reassembling this unit i've got my lathe working now so i'll be able to make a bushing because i want to um, use a raised panel cutter on this thing and I don't have the arbor originally I think this was shipped with two arbors and I only have one 
and so I want to use a uh, panel cutter that I don't have the right size arbor for so I'm just going to make a bushing. Alright, so that's what's going on. That's why this is sitting here and doing nothing. I was waiting to finish my lathe.